saying thank you um, for asking me to collaborate with you. I'm excited to do this. I'm always happy to talk to doctors. What do you think makes a good medical student and what qualities do you have? <laughs> Oh gosh, that, well, there's a lot of things that make a good medical student. I think the main thing is just working hard, but not working too hard. When I look back when I was a medical student, I, I think I could have, you know, taken a break more often. I think I could have been a much more easier on myself. I think we, it's the, the personality types, isn't it? We, we're perfectionists. We want to do the best. You know, we want to be the best. We want to have all these achievements and it's great to be ambitious, but I think we just, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we often work maybe too hard. So I think work hard, but know when to kind of enjoy and to relax and then to switch off basically. Fine. I think that's my top, my top tip. <laughs> Thank you for that. So I just want to ask you a bit more about your um, FY1, FY2 and GP experience. So if you could just talk us through um, your... <laughs> okay. Oh, see, it seems so long ago. Let me get comfy because it seems so long ago. I'm trying to remember now. Um, so I'll probably talk through my rotations then and, and that might help and then I can maybe then talk about how I found some of the rotations and yeah, try and cool. keep it as, as short and snappy as possible because yeah. we could be here forever basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so F1. So I started off in cardiology. So I did two months cardiology and two months uh, stroke medicine and then I went on to do general medicine but I was based on a diabetes and endocrinology ward which was interesting and then I did general surgery and I was so although my the surgeon was a general surgeon his specialty was colorectal surgery um, and then F2 I started off in general practice and then I went on to do surgical HDU um, so I was basically on just a high dependency unit um, and then you get all the surgeons who would just have, you know, look after their patients. But I was the main person on there. I was kind of supernumerary. And then I went on to do care of the elderly. Um, so the, all my rotations are pretty busy, apart from GP, um, which was quite nice to, you know, step off the treadmill, so to speak. Um, but yeah, they were all really busy. Um, I mean, I don't want to paint a really horrible picture here, but it was just, I think I, I went into a, a couple of hospitals where the, you know, the staffing pressures and it was just a really, really busy hospitals. I think I learned loads. I just think it was at a very fast pace. And I think it doesn't matter where you go. Um, you'll always be kind of thrown at the deep end and you have to learn very quickly. So it's good in one respect, but it depends on the type of person you are. It, it depends on how you learn. And not everyone responds well to being chucked in to the deep end, but you adapt. And I think that goes from, again, personality types and wanting to do well. And then also being a medical student and, you know, what you have to do and adapt to as a medical student. So I think most people will do very well but it does take a bit of time to get used to the change and the fast paced environment, I would say. So going to general practice, GP training. Um, yeah, let me go back because I'm trying to remember. My first placement was GP actually. Yeah, so I had six month placements instead of four month placements, but some people do have four month placements depending on where, what area you're based in. So I started off with general practice um, and then I went on to palliative medicine for six months. Then I went on to do care of the elderly again. So I've done 10 months of care of the elderly at this point. Um, and then I did obstetrics and gynecology. And then my last year, I went back to general practice. So that's yeah, all my placements in a nutshell. Um, I think it would have been good to obviously do another placement, um, but it just worked out that I had you know, more care of the elderly, which is, which is really good, actually, because in general practice, um, well, in general, um, we have an aging population. So, you know, it is good to get as much um, experience as you can actually treating people and elderly people with multiple comorbidities um, and trying to manage them holistically as well. So definitely, although I wanted to do something else, actually looking back, it, it, it did help me. It has helped me. Okay. So, so yes. So my next five questions are from Instagram. Um, so, Mim.medic asks, what made you pick GP? So there were a whole host of reasons. <laughs> the top thing would be work-life balance. And also the fact that there's so many things you can do with GP as a foundation. The main thing I would say is that career autonomy. And I think one of my frustrations in the hospital was that 
I was told when to kind of do things, when I could take time off, you know, when I could plan my life. And one of the reasons I chose medicine and, and being a doctor was for that career autonomy and being in charge of my own kind of career and destiny. And then to get into medicine and then kind of have that taken away from you almost or having it or waiting a very long time for then for you to get to that career autonomy or that place where you have that control. I think, yeah, GP just for me ticks a lot of boxes and those were the key things I would say for choosing general practice. So the next question is from Cabby Sodes and he asks, what is one unique thing you did or still do that has prepared you best to be a, a GP? Oh, I think, I mean, we're all in a, we're all a work in progress. I will say that. I think to be, a, a good doctor you have to have good communication skills um, and as a GP you know you do spend a lot of your time communicating when I worked in palliative medicine the ward run is completely different you you do obviously examine patients if you need to but it's very much talking the patient is at the forefront it's a very holistic approach so I think having a rotation in palliative medicine and then going on some communication courses and then just trying to keep working at my communication. So I would say communication and just trying to improve communication. One thing I think that has helped me, but even I need to improve. <laughs> the next question is from Priya and she's studying abroad. She's studying medicine abroad and she wanted to know, what are your tips or advice for someone planning to do residency or practice in the UK in the future? Um, I'll try and keep it to one, one kind of key tip. I think obviously if you're trying to um, practice abroad or somewhere that's, that you don't know much about or you haven't worked in before, then just try to know and learn as much as you can about that um, health system. So of course for us it'll be the NHS, know a bit about the history, the structure, know about it and then it's difficult to get experience but do your best to try and secure some experience maybe join things like linkedin or platforms and connect with people because someone usually knows someone who might be able to help you about the system and then try your best to connect with people to try and get some experience or even just speak to people and get their experiences because even just speaking to people really helps fine um and the next question is from insidemedicine.co.uk um, okay. they've asked to pardon up or be a salary GP? What are the pros and cons? Hmm. So again, there's a video coming out on my YouTube channel about this. I don't yeah. want to give too much away, but I think when you're a salary GP or even like a locum GP, you don't really have a say in how the practice runs. Okay. Some people like this because they just want to do their job and then kind of just go. Um, and it is more of a responsibility being a GP partner. It's just the toss up between how invested do you want to be? It just depends on what you're looking for and where you are in your journey before you jump in or you get into something like a partnership it's good to have a, a foundation so it's basically up to what um they want out of being a gp essentially isn't it yeah yeah and, and you know they you can change you can be a salary and then be a partner okay so or you can be a partner and then decide i don't want to be a partner anymore and then go back to being a salary so you don't have to stay you know just doing one thing um forever okay fine so you do, have, you can keep your options open, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the final question is from Marcus Williams, and he he's asked, um, when's the best time to leave medicine for the corporate world? Uh, my question would be, <laughs> why do you want to leave medicine? <laughs> um, I think this one is very unique to yourself. So if you decided you want to leave medicine, it just depends on when you think is the right time to do that, financially the right headspace um i think just start off by yes it would be interesting to know why he or why she wants to leave uh medicine um because that would definitely help decide on when maybe the best time i think for many people it does go down to or it comes down to financial aspects um you know if you've got a mortgage to pay can you just leave medicine and jump into uh, another job whether that's corporate or other otherwise um the benefits of actually doing medicine and having a medical degree and working as a doctor is that we have loads of transferable skills which would definitely help in a corporate setting and I know many doctors who have left medicine and gone into the corporate world and done very well there so I'm not sure I could answer it in terms of when is the right time it would be you know depending on the person's circumstances um, I think for me it would be interesting to know why you want to leave medicine and then what you think the corporate setting would then maybe 
have for you or how that would suit your personality or suit your 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 current um experience or your current situation okay fine so those are all the questions i have thank you so much for answering okay. these um is there any final message you have for viewers um maybe something about your youtube channel <laughs> oh i don't want to use it to promote but hey <laughs> um so my youtube channel is really about just providing loads of information you'll find that a lot of my videos are very informational um i will try and change it and put some other things but i think for me i want to get a lot of information out there and i think a lot of people so maybe you know you can ask this question but maybe at your stage you want to know about specialties you want to know about the working aspects and i think when you're in medical school you you're really taught to be a doctor or you're taught you're given the clinical skills and you have to pass exams and all the knowledge but you may not necessarily know about the intricacies or the working aspects. And I think I'm trying to provide more of that on my channel, but definitely more of an insight into general practice and trying to just show how it's a really, really good career and how there's so many things you can do with it. I think often sometimes people think that GPs we've either taken the easy route because it's a short training program and it seems really easy or we're not as skilled as some of the specialty doctors um and I just think GP sometimes gets a really bad kind of um really bad time of it um but I think it's a really really good specialty and I think it just depends on the type of person you are really um and I don't really have any oh, it's difficult for me to give tips because everyone is really different um but even as a medical student you can there's loads of things you can do to find out which specialty might suit you but the key thing i would say is just know who you are know your personality and try and look into the future which is very difficult to do but from you know look at five ten years where do you want to be um i think for me when i was you know 18 and i just got into ucl i wasn't thinking about you know, being 31 and wanting to have a family and settle down and get a house. And I was just thinking about medicine. I was obsessed. We're all obsessed with becoming a doctor and, you know, getting all the knowledge and um, all those great things. And I think just maybe try and be a bit more open-minded and don't shut certain specialties down or certain options down um, and just think, okay, so I'm 25 now, 24, whatever it is now. In 10 years, where do I hope to be? What do I want to have achieved? Um, and that again goes with goal setting. So I think that would be a few of the things I would say to help you know, anyone who's um, watching uh, the video now. Okay, fine. Um, thank you so much for that. I think that's a really nice message to finish off with. And um, I really like your YouTube channel as well. And I hope you keep putting yes. out some great content. I think it's really informational. Um, and I think there isn't um, that much information provided, like you said, for medical students to plan their careers mm. around. So I think it's a great thing that you're doing. Um, so thank you. Thanks. No, thank you. And likewise, I like your channel and I'm really glad that I could be a part of this series where you're interviewing um, loads of different doctors. Because I think, again, that's something that's needed as well. And it's always good to get an insight and I'm going to continue to follow you and to uh, keep up to date with what you're doing. Fine. Likewise. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, take care. You too, bye-bye.